gang, happy new year and welcome to another exciting adventure of the Grand Circle Tour podcast. I am Stan Solo and I will be your driver today, your pilot, your pilot. And I got two co-pilots with me. I got George. George, how are you today? I'm doing good, Stan. How about yourself? I am so good. And also with me today, we have Jungle Skipper Jay. How are you doing? Aloha, Stan. I'm fantastic. How are you? I am amazing, and I'm ready to review 2018. Okay, so let's dive right into this. George, how was your 2018, and are you looking forward to 2019? Well, 2018, I have to admit, was a bit rocky. Um, Can't say that it was completely horrible, but I mean, there were some highs, some lows. Um, Definitely when... uh, uh, the highest of the high was definitely our uh, Disney trip, which we'll probably get into in a few mem- moments. But uh, I'm definitely looking forward to 2019 uh, special trip, which I know you guys know about coming up in August of 2019. And uh, a lot of uh, Disney movies I'm looking forward to seeing. And yeah, I'm, I'm ready for 2019. Bring it on. All right. So your highest of the high was your trip, the trip that you've done a number of times, as opposed to a certain podcast that you started in 2018. Yes. I. <laughs> you know, that's funny because I actually remembered that. Um, <laughs> Look at him back. Paddle now. Look at him yeah. back. Paddle. <laughs> Stan busting out the shade. First thing. <laughs> Anyways, I understand. I understand. And Jason, how was your 2018? 2018 was a good year. I'm I'm pretty happy with 2018. And I am looking forward to 2019. It's going to be a great year. Um, Like like the balloon lady said in Mary Poppins, there's nowhere to go but up. (laughs) I was going to say, and I'm I'm guessing your highlight was your Disneyland trip, right? No. Oh, (laughs) my, my official answer is, it was the Grand Circle Tour podcast. There you go. That's the right answer. <laughs> How is it that shade, George? <laughs> oh, it just got blistery cold. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna go by month. Okay, we're we're gonna go month by month, starting in January and ending in. Can anyone guess? October. So close, December. We're gonna <laughs> go month by month, and we're gonna kind of hit the kind of uh, the bullet points I would say and we can't cover it all Disney such a huge umbrella but we're going to try to get some Disney World some Disneyland Disney movies okay we're going to go month by month <laughs> starting in January and ending in October <laughs> oh so close we're going to end in December this time we're not going to end fiscal year no no if Dan was here he would only give you one point for that Anyways, we're going to do some bullet points and we're going to cover the kind of the highlights and the stuff that I just thought of. I can't really think of everything that's going on in the Disney umbrella because it is so huge. But we'll start off with uh, in the movies starting in 2019, we had The Last Jedi. Now, yes, before anybody starts writing in, The Last Jedi came out in 2018. 2000, 2018. Hmm? 17. 2017. 17. Right. But it, I feel that the impact of The Last Jedi didn't hit the Star Wars fan base until 2018 because it really split for the first time ever, even more than Episode One or the prequels, the fan base, I feel. Some people really, really enjoyed The Last Jedi, whereas other fans didn't so much. And it kind of caused a riff in the fan community. And that's why I put it on this year's list as opposed to next year's list simply because of the rift that it caused what are your guys thoughts on that oh yeah this movie hit the community some of us right in the face (laughs) george what were your thoughts on the last jedi looking back at it a year later i was okay i'm just going to be very honest i was very disappointed with it i with all the hype that it was going on, I actually enjoyed the trailer more than I did the movie. When I saw the, the, the full trailer after like weeks before it came out, I thought, wow, I cannot wait to see this movie. And I went to um, a sneak preview of it and they had 
the stormtroopers, uh, Vader, Chewbacca was walking around the movie theater and everything. Like they had the whole movie theater dolled up for this movie. And walking out of the theater, I thought, wow, they just wasted a whole bunch of money getting this theater set up for this movie. Cause I, uh, it was, it just set up a, a point where I thought the expectancy was something completely different than what I got out of it at the end. And I wasn't the only one because there started some applause at the, the end of the movie. And then people kind of like stopped mid clap thinking, should I be clapping right now? <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, applauded because it was over. Like, like I do know, I do know fans that absolutely love, love, love the movie. And to this day, they still love the movie and they're putting it in their top two, three, one favorite Star Wars movies. And, and I think all three of us are in the same boat with this and that we don't really get that. And this movie, I felt really split the fan community, but it is what it is. And we're, I felt that because of that, it really hurt a movie we're going to be talking about a few months from now or a few months on up ahead on my list, but it really hurt uh, Solo. And it'd be interesting to see what happens a year from now when the next episode nine comes out. I'll just hmm? say this for Last Jedi. Um, our local video store had the Blu-ray on sale for $5. I picked it up. I looked at it, thought, I'm never going to watch this one again. And I put it down and walked away. Yeah, though, if, if I didn't have it, I'd definitely get it for five bucks. I mean, just because I am a movie collector. But yeah, I, I, I yeah, it's sad. It's sad that it, it, it just didn't hold up to your expectations. Moving on, in Disney Springs, now, again, this was 2017, but it was January 31st, 2017, that the Edison opened for the very first time. New Year's Eve, they hit it with a bang. Uh, have neither either one of you been to the Edison? Not yet, but it's high, high on my list of things to do at Disney World. Same thing for me. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, same, so. yeah, same here. I haven't been, but it, yeah, it, it is it is something to uh, experience from what I understand. I uh, want to go well, we're, for the go evening ahead. and have. I want to go see the burlesque show in the evening. Oh yeah, well yeah, to go there for lunch would be kind of a waste of time. There's so many things in Disney Springs. Uh, also, in Disney Springs opening, Maria and Enzo's opened in uh, Disney Springs and Pizza Pointe opened and Pizza Pointe opened with very mixed reviews. I remember some people going and saying, finally, Orlando has pizza and other people went and said, Orlando still doesn't have pizza. Was, are those either one of those on your guys' uh, list to must do next time you go? For uh, me, sorry. yeah. Go, sorry, George. No, no, yeah, go ahead. No, you go first. No, you. Okay, Jason, go ahead. <laughs> I'm keeping this in. Uh, Maria Enzo is, is high on my list of things to do. Uh, and Nikki highly recommended it. Yeah. And they did have a really good discount for uh, annual pass holders. Uh, last time I was there and I was going to go and I just didn't, didn't go. I had uh, too many other things to do. Uh, George, were you going to add? Yeah, pretty much for me, all the new stuff that just recently came out at Disney Springs. Um, I'm very curious to try for myself because I know, a lot of the restaurants got mixed reviews. Some got higher reviews, but I think I just want to just experience it myself and make that decision. Yeah. And then we're going to zip across the coast to downtown Disney in California and Splitsville opened on January 29th. Now I've been to the Splitsvilles in Splitsville in Disney Springs, but not to the one in California. I'm assuming they're very similar. Have you either? What have you even heard much about Splitsville's opening in uh, California, Jason? No. Jason? Uh, I've heard, not really. No. George? Yeah, no, I haven't. I mean, I I did experience the one down at Disney World, but I I don't know if they just didn't really give a lot of attention to it opening. But I'm I'm curious to see if it's the same, if there's any differences to it. Yeah, yeah, that's the same thing that I kind of felt too. Like I didn't hear too much about it when it opened. I'm not sure if it was the Disney Springs restaurants opening kind of overshadowed it in our social media group. But uh, yeah, no, I didn't hear very much about it at all. Um, and all you keep hearing about in downtown Disney is everything that closed in order to make room for that hotel that will never be or hasn't moved at all. Downtown Disney's uh, official song is Ghost Town by the Specials. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So after that, they closed all those businesses down. Downtown Disney essentially was cut in half, essentially, right? Yeah. I mean, because yeah, that's where right right it. Disney World's was. I mean, Rainforest is sitting there, an empty building right now. Jeez. And AMC Theaters opened up across the street on the other side of uh, Disneyland. They've Are rushed. they going to eventually reopen those businesses back up? Is something else going there? or? I haven't heard anything as of yet. I'm assuming we're going to hear something during the D23 Expo or perhaps before that. That's what I'm guessing. It's a huge loss of revenue, so I'm sure they have plans in the big yellow, in the big yellow building in the back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they may be rushing those plans together, but they're not going to let that that real estate sit there empty for too long. Yeah. Although there is a second Starbucks now in downtown Disney. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I can't get one in my hometown, but there's two in uh, <laughs> the same street. But I, I do have to tell you, uh, one of my coworkers, she went for the very first time. Uh, she went for a hockey tournament, and her son was playing. And she went, they did, she didn't go to Disneyland or Disney conference venture, but they did go to downtown Disney and she was very impressed on it. And I said, because really, it doesn't seem like there's much to do there. Like from what I hear, I haven't been since they closed everything. She goes, Oh, there was all sorts of stuff to do. And I guess as a very first time going, she didn't know any different. She hadn't even heard that there was parts that were closed or anything. So they're doing a good job at covering it up from that, that conversation I had. And on a personal note, for January, I did manage to get to visit um, Walt Disney World for a week, and I hung out with some friends, and it was a solo trip. But didn't spend very much time being solo because I had people to hang out with for the most, well, pretty much the entire time. And the Festival of Arts was happening at Walt Disney World, and I was so impressed with that that I booked it again for this year, or next year, I guess, depending, as we're recording this. For 2019, I had booked it. I'm going to go for another solo trip because I enjoyed it so much last year. Stan, huh? technically every trip you go on is a solo trip. Well, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> That's, I get the card back from, from Disney with the little drawing and it's solo family <laughs> on, the, on the bottom. And <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I guess it was a solo trip. Did you either of you have anything to add for January? I think our silence answers that. <laughs> okay. No one's putting up their hand. Let's move on to February. And February, this was uh, kind of another one that kind of went under the radar. I don't think too many people remember this or heard about it. But Jambo House at the Animal Kingdom Lodge went cashless. You could no longer pay for cash for your meal at Jambo House. You can use credit card, debit card, magic bands, gift cards, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, anything you want to pay with except for cash. What were your thoughts on that, George? Um, just out of curiosity, does anyone pay with cash anymore? <laughs> That's kind of what I felt too <laughs> at the time when, when this happened. They were, they're doing a test and they haven't expanded it to anywhere else as far as I know. But my understanding is it's still doing, they're still going cashless. I always travel with cash. I never don't have cash on me. So uh, I'm again it. I put most things on card, but I always have cash when I travel. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, I do, when I travel, I do have cash on me because they say, you know, you're supposed to have something just in case of emergency or anything. But like usually with a purchase or something, I, I guess it's just a reflex that I just go and grab for my car. <laughs> well, it depends too. If I want to hide a certain purchase from my spouse, cash all the way. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I, I, you know what, I don't think that's uncommon you know, for people to do that. <laughs> if Disney was smart, they would do an upcharge to provide you with a receipt that says you paid exactly what you telling your spouse you paid. <laughs> and also the other way around, I also do that too when I'm buying for a gift for somebody else because my wife is Nebby. Like Who she, are you buying gifts for that you don't want your wife to know about, George? No. <laughs> How many? The gift, the gift is for my wife. And, oh, okay. And okay. she she's nebby where she looks at receipts where it, and she doesn't even do it on purpose, but she'll end up spoiling my surprise. So I have to not leave a track, a trace. Of, oh, okay. 
Okay, we'll we'll give you that one. No, no, no. I I I, I would be in the doghouse if I was considering that. I'd be sitting with Pluto. <laughs> I just spent 15 bucks on a Tower of Terror magnet and I put that on my business card so that my husband can't see it. <laughs> and then um, moving along in February, we also had one of the big money makers for the Disney was Black Panther came out on February 16th. Did that movie deserve all it made and deserve all the hype, uh, Jason? Yes. George? Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think that the uh, the Black Panther did phenomenal, and there was a reason for it. Let's move into March, and the big news in March that happened at Walt Disney World that kind of broke the internet and made a lot of people really angry was parking fees started at Walt Disney World Studios for guests. And I know this affected a lot of people, and a lot of people I know. I just want to say this: a lot of people said, "Don't." add parking fees just raise the price of the rooms nay nay i say yeah i don't no. take a car when i'm in walt disney world i don't either so i mean they could raise it to 200 dollars. it's not going to mean a thing to me and this Was is the the parking? Reason? yeah go ahead and, jason and now i won't rent a car when i go to florida i'll just uber it what's what's the point of yeah, exactly. renting a car it's just it's just an not just an added expense you've just added a whole bunch of expense to your trip I mean, right. I do feel for the people who are locals, you know, that they, they take their car and everything, but they also have to understand with all this construction and everything that's being built and everything, they need more room, you know, more people's going to be coming and Disney has to make its money back. Right. And the other thing too is like, you're sure you're saving a lot of money by driving. Um, if you, it's you're still saving. Say you live in Texas and you drive, you're still saving money driving your family of four than you would be buying four plane tickets from Texas to to Orlando. And yes, you got a little bit extra expense by having to pay for your for your parking. And if you're not happy with it, I mean, it means this has been said a hundred times on a hundred different websites. If you're not happy with it, then just don't don't stay on Disney property. That's the bottom line, right? Also in March. A Wrinkle in Time came out, and that was on March 9th. Have you guys seen this movie? We haven't. We weren't together yet at this point recording, so I don't. I don't know what you guys ever thought of this movie, George. I did not see the movie in theaters. Um, I was contemplating on doing so, but um, it wasn't actually until I think it was like two months ago where my wife and I actually sat down and watched it on Netflix. And about halfway through the movie, we ended up falling asleep. <laughs> okay, keep that in mind, passengers. Jason, what were your thoughts? Haven't seen it, and I'm probably not going to. Okay, I went to see this when I was on a Disney cruise, where the movie theaters are free and included part of your, not free, but they're included part of your ticket, right? Like George, I fell asleep. I don't think it was halfway through. I think it was 20 minutes through, or 10 minutes through. I was asleep, and it slept through the whole thing. And I do want to see it though. It does look, it does pique my interest still. I haven't seen it since. Yeah, I then, mean, we, we have thought about like rewatching it, but we just didn't get to it. It's like something I want to see, but yet it's not like at the top of my list. Yeah. Now, if the internet wasn't broken with the parking fees at Walt Disney World, then this next uh, bullet point came really close to breaking it, and it was Pirates of the Caribbean reopened at Walt Disney World with the new redhead. <laughs> and I was, uh, Jason and I have both seen it. George, have you seen the new redhead in person? Or um, no, I haven't seen it in person, but I have watched a lot of videos on YouTube and I, I definitely have my opinions on it, so. Okay, before you give yours, Jason, what's your opinion on this? Love it. I, now that I've seen Red, I, I love her. Uh, my only critique would be the only thing they should have swapped out was Red. They should have kept the scene the way it is and have her be this bad butt pirate while they're still scribbling. We want the redhead and she shoots them. Okay. But the figure's great. The scene is great. I, I like the change. Yeah. And George, what was yours? Jason actually said it for me. I mean, as far as the animatronic and how she holds herself, I think that, forgive me, passengers, I'm sorry, she's a badass pirate. 
Yeah. And I just felt like that even if they would have kept the We Once the Redhead, it was <clears throat> still the representation of a woman standing up on her own. So if the pirates were saying We Once the Redhead, all she would have to do is just take one fire out of her pistol. And it's like they would have shut up. <laughs> it would have been a much more interesting scene if they had if she was the one auctioning off the women. Yeah. Because in that, I think that they, as far as changing the scene goes, I'm all for it. But I think that they could have done something a little bit more juicier than just something that simple. And I haven't seen the walk around character at New Orleans Square, but the red walk around looks like a fantastic addition. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. And no. since Johnny, since Johnny Depp's out, let's recap. Let's let's make red the lead. Isn't that what they're considering? Is is she going to go? That's the rumor. That's what I, I believe. I believe that's what the, the talk was. Yeah. Well, we're still in March. We can't forget the biggest news story of all of March, and that was on March seventh, two thousand and eighteen. The very first episode, episode zero or adventure zero, as we call it now, of the Grand Circle Tour podcast came out. Now, this was really low on George's list. I know. <laughs> But Jason was really excited uh, with the episode coming out, or the adventure, as we call it now. Uh, what do you guys think, George? No, I. as much as you think it's low on my, my podium list, but it's not. But <laughs> um, it, Trying to save yourself there, huh? Yeah, yes, I am. I'm, I'm trying to play the sympathy card here from our passengers. So. <laughs> um, no, it was very unexpected, but it was, a, it was in a positive way. Like I wouldn't have imagined that we would have come this far and actually gaining a friendship to all of you. I, especially of not even knowing each other. Yeah. That you just took a whole bunch of strangers said, let's do this. Let's get this project going. And of how we meshed well and just became friends and how our personalities are different, but yet the same. And it's, I know why I haven't said it because it left me speechless. <laughs> there we go and that's just it you know what we became such great friends because of this little show that you know that the eight of us listen to <laughs> Jason. i have two things to say about this one um episode zero is still my favorite because it's the only time all eight of us have been on yeah together but it's also my favorite because <clears throat> there was a moment when we were recording and i i could see all eight of us together and that's when I knew it was going to work, that we had something special. Yeah, yeah. And episode zero was actually, I'm going to tear away the curtain a little bit here. I haven't checked the numbers recently, but on my understanding, or I believe that that is still our most downloaded episode. It's the episode zero where all eight of us were on. Yeah. yeah. Moving on to April in Disneyland, Paint the Night returns for a limited time. It was there from April until November. So a few months it was there. And this one kind of makes me angry because I really wanted to see the Paint the Night Parade. And I'm not going to be there until August 2019. So fingers crossed they bring it back a second time. <laughs> Jason, do you uh, recall seeing Paint the Night back in your – have you ever seen it? I was there in April. I will tell you my favorite thing about parades at Disneyland is the way it takes uh, people out of line for rides. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can do that. So people like me will jet past a parade and get on Haunted Mansion or Big Thunder? I, I agree with you, except I really want to see this one. This one looks amazing. George? Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I had seen Paint the Night when I went out to Disneyland. Um, I forget when I, when I did. I, but anyway, so yeah, I definitely I saw Paint the Night, and it actually is one of my favorite parades that Disney had come up. I love the music. I love the floats. I love the lights. Just everything about it. it. It just worked perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Jason, you mentioned about your, your trip in April and that was on my list. Uh, my bullet points that Jason did a trip to in April to Disneyland. No. Back, back home to Disneyland. Back home. Now, was this the one where you, you finally had a, Meet and greet with a character? No, that was with you. 
Well, that was a real one, but this one you had a we had a contest for this uh, one. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And, and and you 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 sort of had a meet and greet. I I, I, I was walking to yeah, I didn't. It was a meet and greet out of wedlock. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I bumped into Dr. Facilier in New Orleans Square and it was a two second take a picture with me, gotta go by. Yeah. Now, when you said the first meet and greet you had with the character was me, I was the character? Wait, what's going on here? No, I'm joking. Oh, you were quite a character. <laughs> uh, where are we here? April, Avengers Infinity War hit the big screen on April 27th and left everybody speechless until they went, this isn't going to be the way it ends. They're all coming back, right? <laughs> so I guess we'll find out that in 2019. Avengers Infinity War, your favorite movie of the year, yes or no, George? Yes, definitely. This is... Not my favorite movie of the year, no, but I enjoy it. <laughs> I know, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins was my favorite. We'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Avengers yeah, Infinity probably... War is up there for me, probably my second favorite movie of the year. I... Yeah, yeah, it's definitely up there. I mean, it's not like the, the number one for me, but I mean, it's definitely high up there. But I was actually upset with not the movie but i was actually upset with the people seeing it walking out of the theater where they're like how could it have ended like this and oh they're all going it's like did you not know that this is a two-parter <laughs> yeah it's like it had to end with a cliffhanger in order for avengers now endgame you know we didn't know the title of it back then yeah i think i think people woke up from from an infinity war with the, the uh, marvel hangover going no this didn't happen it's gonna be fixed well, this, this one didn't hit me. I mean, the rest of the audience was upset at the end. And I've been reading comics my whole life. I know that death means nothing. Yeah, yeah. Jean Grey, Jason Todd, Bucky Barnes, Gwen yeah. Stacy. Yeah, Superman, uh, they, Batman. They, they even said that Endgame was supposed to be, is supposed to be longer, like lengthwise, than Infinity War. I'm still looking forward to that movie. They I said that it's a p almost going to be hitting three hours. Wow. Anyone else have anything to add for April? Can we move I on? did go on Mission Breakout for the first time. Okay. Don't you dare touch my tower in Florida. But I loved it. It was fun. I, I was one of those burn it to the ground rather than change it people. Mm -hmm. And when I finally did it, it was a blast. I can hardly wait till the three of us go to California Adventure and we go to Mission Breakout and I stand in line with you guys. And, and then, then you afterwards, you goes, you goes have, a, have a chair and enjoy the, tri the trip down and I'll take the, the regular and elevator. hold our bags. We'll be right back. I'll hold your bags for you and I'll meet you downstairs. <laughs> I'm looking I, forward to seeing you. I, I just love how Mission Breakout fits well for California Adventure and the Tower of Terror fits better at EHS. Yeah. Like I, I can't see it changing over to Mission Breakout at Florida, but I can see the change of why it was necessary for uh California. The tower in Florida is perfect and once you go on it, the one in California sucks, to be honest. Yeah. It was it was never as good because they, they didn't do have the fifth dimension. It just wasn't as good. And yeah. attractions really should be different in the different parks around the world, is my personal opinion. This, I, I mean, like, yes, I'm excited for Galaxy's Edge to open, but do they? I know it's cheaper for them to make the exact same carbon copy in both parks and whatnot, but it would be so much more cooler if they were different. If they were two different ports. Oh, yeah, definitely. Visit, you know? Yeah, I but, think that they should have had for the two different parks, two diff in the Star Wars universe, but two different worlds, so to speak. The yeah. Universe, Sort of like how what they're doing with Marvel, mm -hmm. that having Marvel lands, but they're different lands, but they're all interconnected. Exactly. That's what I wish they would have done with Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Am I but, the only one who wishes that they would have just done a Star Wars park? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah obviously. Yeah. I actually thought before they announced it at the, the expo that I actually thought that was going to be the fifth gate at Disney World, and then they changed it to just the land. But I thought for the longest time that was going to be the fifth gate. Yeah. Moving along, in May at Disney Springs, Wine Bar George opens, 
and it boasts to have 135 different types of wine. I'm not a drinker. I'll probably never go to this place. Uh, George, seeing how it's named after you, I'm assuming you're excited to go. <laughs> um, I actually didn't even hear of it till right now. So. <laughs> There we go. Jason, how about you? Have you heard of this place? Yes, and you guys know I, I enjoy a good glass of wine, so I yeah. am looking forward to it when I have some more time at Disney in 2019. I will, yeah. often, have a, I will often have a nice glass of wine when we're recording. <laughs> and you could tell when Jason had a nice glass of wine when we're recording. Or two. <laughs> or two. And it's not the little glass that someone... Oh, no, it's the full-on cartoon it's, size. Yeah. It's that four-foot yeah. Costco glass. I think he has the, the four-liter box on, on his desk beside him when, he, when we're recording sometimes. It's not box wine. It's, it's, car, it's a card Bordeaux. Oh. Uh, the other big news that kind of came as a shock and a surprise for everyone that hit everybody's Facebook page as a Disney fan, Maleficent, the dragon, caught on fire during the parade do we all remember that <laughs> oh yeah i think we all uh, giggled over it there was a lot of memes that came out of that one yeah what i what i take from this one though was how quickly the cast members were able to react and to put out the fire and keep the crowd safe and to keep all the performers safe it really was a testament to the training and the reaction time that the cast members had i felt yeah, definitely. And they're just so cool about it. Like, like as if they, it never happened before, but yet they treat it as if they deal with it every single day. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Like something on fire, it catches on fire every single day. And they're used to it. Well, it's got to be one of those. Every time they do it, they know it could happen, so they're ready for it. Yeah. No, I believe the first year that the, as the Festival of Fantasy Parade started, that the Muslim Dragon had caught some of the awnings on fire on Main Street. Uh, it didn't seem to create nearly the buzz that this one did. And it was put out just as quickly, if not quicker. But it was because of that, that they actually kind of redesigned some of the awnings, I understand. I, I mean, maybe I dreamt this, I don't know. But it was because of the uh, Maleficent Dragon that they changed the Christmas um, decorations in that they no longer swooped right across Main Street. They just had the extensions come off the lampposts. And that was because of the more so because of the height of the dragon than anything else going Is she down. Supposed you know? to return? Are they ever going to bring her back? Or last I heard, they were doing test runs backstage. Um, whether it was test runs with fire, or without fire, I haven't seen any pictures or heard anything definitely. Or nothing. Disney hasn't announced anything. I've just a hearsay from different websites. But I believe I'm pretty sure that Melissa will, will return. What are your guys' thoughts? Jason, do you think Melissa will ever come back in its full glory, blowing fire? It's a beautiful piece. It'd be a shame not to return it. Um, it, it. It's great to look at. It doesn't need the fire. You know, let's just be safe and turn it off and enjoy the clockwork dragon for what it is. Yeah. Also in May, on May 25th, Solo hit the big silver screen. Now, this was my personal favorite movie of the year because this is actually the Star Wars movie that I've been waiting for since I was 11 years old. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned this before on the, on the uh, show, but I didn't get to see Star Wars until, uh, I think it was like 1978. And by that time, the Marvel comics were already on episode or edition, like 11, 12, 13 were coming out by the time I got to see Star Wars in the theater. So if you go back to the original Marvel comic series, from, uh, I'm thinking it's around the 8, 9, 10, 11, were pretty much standalone solo stories with Jax the Rabbit and Chewie. So when I went to go see Star Wars for the first time, I had heard all the hype from reading Starlog magazine and from friends who had been able to go to the city and see it, or uh, my sister was telling me all about it. And I'm waiting for Jax the Rabbit to come on the screen, and there's no Jax the Rabbit. <laughs> I'm waiting for Han Solo to be the big star because this is the person I knew the most I had the star Han Solo action figure already. And he wasn't, didn't come on until later in the movie. So, I mean, like, yes, I love, love, love Star Wars. It was like, it changed my life. But I always wanted a solo, solo movie. 
and I finally got one last year, this year, 2018. What are your guys' uh, thoughts on the Solo? Well, I definitely could say after The Last Jedi, Solo was a breath of fresh air. So, yeah. <laughs> um, going into the theater, I mean, I had my reservations of how, because, I mean, every time you think of Han Solo, you think of immediately Harrison Ford and someone else taking over that role. Um, long story short, coming out of the movie, I actually, in the theater, I liked it, but it wasn't until we got it on Blu-ray and we rewatched it again as a family is where it actually hit me to where, wow, this is a really good story. Yeah. And it's such a shame. And I think that th what happened with The Last Jedi splitting the fans really affected Solo. Along with it coming back, so coming out so soon after, I mean, the Avengers were still in the theater because the Avengers was doing so well. And Black Panther had just left the theater and some theaters were still there and solo came out so it had a couple of things just not going for it me and personally i would have released solo now oh. it should have came out this christmas yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 I, I guess they were saving the spot for mary poppins and putting you know i guess disney figured doesn't matter when star wars comes out it's going to be a hit hopefully they learned something from this that'll learn them that'll learn them <laughs> You know, this Anything is, else for me? Solo takes my number three spot in my Star Wars favorite Star Wars films. I love this movie. I love everything about it. It's a movie I can throw on any time and watch and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree, except I put it number two. If it hadn't been for Mary Poppins, it would have been my favorite movie of the year. What are your guys' top three Star Wars movies? Just out of curiosity. George? Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Solo. And long pauses aren't good for radio. <laughs> Empire Strikes Back, Solo, and um, uh, A New Hope. Yeah, I, I agree with you, George, except I keep putting Rogue One and A New Hope kind that's, of back and forth that, around each other. Where, yeah. That's where my pause was. I was, I was trying to depict yeah. which one I would prefer over. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rogue One did it for me also. See, ours are so similar. Mine is Empire's Rogue One solo. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, moving into June. June 24th at Walt Disney World, Toy Story Land finally opens up to much esteem and a much... Why is it so hot in here? The, we need some shade. <laughs> now, Jason, you walk through Toy Story Land, but you didn't spend too much time on it because you were in Tower of Terror like crazy when you went. George, have you had a chance yet to? Uh... Yes. yes. Yes? Yes. Perfect. So, Toy Story Land, did it live up to its hype? Uh, Jason? It's cute. Um, I would enjoy it more taking my nephew. My only gripe is they got rid of the Monte Cristo before I could have one. But I heard it wasn't nearly, didn't live up to what Disneyland's was. Oh, dude, nothing can live up to Disneyland's. We're going to have a Monte Cristo buffet when we go. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait. Uh, George? Um, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, it's, it's a nice addition. I, I think, like, with everything that Hollywood Studios has been going through with the decline in uh, guests and, and the ratings of everything, I mean, it definitely was a breath of fresh air to bring something in and something nice that's kid friendly and family oriented that you can take your kids to. Cause I mean, there's not a lot for kids to do uh, too much at Hollywood studios, but. Um, well, there's I, Muppets, there's the March of the first order. There's Yeah. But I mean, like they didn't have like. It's, it's more like, general like, gender like, neutral and younger children. Yeah. Like they didn't have like an entire land that the kids can pretty much go into and sweat the death and, you know, so they had to add Toy Story. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that the, the details were absolutely amazing, and they blew the roof off with it. I mean, it doesn't compare to Cars Land and Disney California Adventure, which I still say is is the number one ranked land. My my only criticism with the land is, to me, when I walk through it, it just felt more narrow. Like, it mm -hmm. just felt like a walking path with Toy Story theme around it. I would have yeah. rather have it expanded and more widened. But, I mean... Yeah. I, 
I, I heard that there are so, there's a little bit of land for a small expansion for Toy Story Land, I heard. Yes. Yeah, once when Galaxy Edge opens, they're going to have to merge the two. The, were, you guys, uh, were you guys like me? Did you feel like Toy Story Land was unfinished when you went in there? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, it, didn't, yeah. it didn't feel complete at all. And that's where I came up to the assumption of was Toy Story Land more so an extra walking space for the, the second entrance into Galaxy's Edge? Just for crowd control. It kind of felt like a place to kill some time while you're waiting on those um, Millennium Falcon fast passes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the crowds there this past Christmas in Toy Story Land? Yes. The, the pictures. Yes. Unbelievable. It, that was, has got to have been B.O. as far as the nose could smell. I, because <laughs> that was on. I could I not. Was, somebody, somebody posted a video. And they had all cast members where they're like literally holding signs of directing people. If you're coming into the land, stay on this side. If you're leaving the land, you're, you're coming out this way. And it was, oh, I, I can't imagine that if it was like that for Toy Story Land, I can't imagine what it's going to be like for Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is not that good. Also in June in Disneyland, Pixar Pier opens up uh, the same month, two weeks Later, I believe, than Toy Story Land yeah, Open. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, everything. Yeah, not quite as big of the fanfare as not as much as I have seen, but I guess it's kind of a more of a re-theming rather than a whole new land opening. But still, there's a lot of really cool things that I want to check out for sure. A lot of cool things, but it only half opened because they still have the carousel to finish, the, the flyers reskinned. Uh, it's, it's undone. Yeah. As of it's right now. Be- yeah, it's it, it's uh it looks cool from what I what I've seen though. Yeah, I I haven't. I'm looking forward to experiencing Pixar Pier, you know, just to because I was a fan of California Scream and just in general. So now to actually see it as the Incredicoaster coaster, that and also get a Jack Jack Num Num cookie. I cheat on. I want to try more the the yellow snow is what I kind of want to try more. So <laughs> you're on your own for yellow snow. I, <laughs> I was actually more impressed and with the food offerings at Pixar Pier to like kind of just like go around and just like snack on everything, see how I like it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm really looking forward to to trying all the num nums. Well, the one critique I've heard uh, about a credit coaster is do it at night. Don't do it during the day, unless you want to see some um, baby Jack Jacks on on spikes. Yeah, that makes I, sense. I call them I call them Jack Jack Sickles. <laughs> the, I've heard uh, the entire thing's just better at night. Yeah. Sorry. Well, you know what? Nearly every single park is better at night. Other yeah. than like, say the water parks, I think every park is better at night. And every land is better at night. I can't think of one that isn't. Well, until I get the weight off, the water park's better at night. <laughs> Uh, and before we move on, kind of backtracking a little bit, I wanted to add for Toy Story Land, uh, Slinky Dog Dash was awesome. Love that ride. Uh, smooth, very thrilling. I mean, I thought it was going to be more towards the kids' side, but I mean, it had some some elements to it where it definitely had a thrill to it. And, and then uh, especially with the, the launch. I love the launch. Um, and then Alien Swirling Saucers, that's like a, you know, just an add-on, but it was fun. I, I really enjoy. I think I did Alien Swirling Saucers like three times. And I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at Jay's face when I mentioned the Alien Swirling Saucers. Okay, I'm- faithful listener, if you've been with us all year, you'll know that that has been a great joke for us all year because we sure like to hit that Alien Swirling Saucer. <laughs> like to hit it hard. It's a smooth ride. Yeah. Okay, moving along. <laughs> Let's go back to Walt Disney World. The app came out my the play disney app hit have either one of you downloaded it and played with it or looked at it or piqued your interest at all i did download it um for the purpose of when we were going on our trip in july and you know seeing how it was and i mean i went on it for like a few times but i mean not as religiously as other people do because i mean like there's just so much that i'm wanting to experience and do that I really wasn't really focusing on an app. 
I, I am 100% in agreement with you. Uh, I downloaded it and I had every intention of while I'm standing in line, I'm going to play this so that I guess I'm just too friendly of a person. I end up talking to the person beside me and I don't go if it's a long line either. So I won't be spending too much time in line. My understanding is that this is going to be very, very interactive with Galaxy's Edge when it opens. I guess time will tell on that one. Jason, did you download it at all? I downloaded it, played with it at home, never once used it at Disney World. Yeah. Yeah, I think I opened it like I twice and for very, very little time. And the only time I, I pulled out my phone was at Disney World was to take pictures or to like FaceTime my mom, look where I am. <laughs> um, in the movie theaters, The Incredibles 2 hit on June 15th. And I actually just watched that two days ago on Blu-ray. And the more I watch it, the more I enjoy it. I really enjoyed it when I first saw it. I thought it hit every mark and was one of the better Disney movies of the year. And yeah, it's it's great. It spawned a whole new Incredicoaster, that movie. <laughs> what are your yeah. thoughts on that one, Jason? Yeah, I, oh, yeah, Jay. Uh, I like it more each time I watch it. And every time I like it, I like it more than the first one. Yeah. Uh, George? Like this is incredible was the star. Sorry, go George. No, you're good. Yeah. No, I absolutely loved it from the time that I saw it in the theater. I thought it just, it was one of those sequels that I haven't seen in a very long time, except for when I went to go see uh, Toy Story 2, that it actually lived up to the original, where you could actually say even the sequel was better. And it it's actually my number two movie of the year. And I watched this one on the same cruise that I tried to watch A Wrinkle in Time on. And I stayed awake for it on <laughs> the entire thing. <laughs> Whereas Wrinkle in Time, I fell asleep. Uh, I, I'm not sure who wrote my bullet points, but they put them mixed up. But anyways, let's go to June 8th. And Pirates of the Caribbean reopens at Disneyland now with the redhead. And I haven't been on the new version, but from what I see on YouTube, it's the exact same as Walt Disney World. Do we have anything to add on this? We'll all see it together in August. Yeah. Yep. And on a personal note, I was able to do I, the aforementioned cruise. I went to Alaska in June for with the WDW Radio Alaska cruise and had an absolute blast. I can hardly wait to go on another cruise. It won't be one for a couple of years, but it was so much fun. Anything to add for June? June was a busy month. We should we should all uh, save up for one of like the uh, the new cruise ships coming up. Yes, yes, we should. Okay, uh, okay. So it, now let's head into July. Disney Springs, the Chicken Guy opens on July twenty fifth. I have not tried this place, but it is very high on my list of places to try because I'm looking for some quick service places to go to as well. Have you? Either one of you have tried this place? No, no. Not, not yet, but I mean, if I do make it done in September with you guys, I definitely want to go there. Yeah. No, George, when you will make it down with us in September. See, you see, they're already putting the guilt trip on me. So Peer, yeah. peer pressure, dude. All the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> also in July, on July 6th, the Ant-Man and the Wasp opened, and it was a movie. <laughs> <laughs> What do you guys think? I think you guys both enjoyed it more than I did. Yeah. 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 I think we both liked it over the first one. Yeah. Yeah, I preferred the first one. But I did order it today on Blu-ray from Amazon. So I'll It's a fun it. movie, but I think at the time we said it was the Wasp movie, not the Ant-Man movie. Yes. Yeah. And on a personal note, George went on a cruise and a huge vacation trip and his anniversary, big anniversary trip. Yes, that was our big trip of the year. Uh, we did a land and sea uh, Disney vacation. Uh, spent five nights at Disney World with uh, my family, including my mom and her boyfriend. And then uh, my wife and uh, my son went on a Disney cruise on a uh, four-night uh, Bahamian cruise uh, on the Disney Dream. Got to stop at Castaway Key and Nassau. Well, we don't really get off on Nassau. We stay on the ships. So. Yeah. <laughs> Castaway Key is just amazing. It's, it's got it. It's, it's paradise. Yes. Yeah. Now we're into August, 
And at Disney Springs, Four Rivers Cantina food truck opened on August 12th. And I love me some food trucks. One of my favorite places to go at Disney Springs to eat is the lobster and mac and lobster mac and cheese at the food truck. So I can hardly wait to try this place out too. This is another one I'm really definitely going to try on my next trip. What do you guys think of this one? You had me at lobster mac and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not served at this one. This one has the cone with the macaroni and cheese in it. But That's fine with me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Food trucks are food trucks are awesome. On August 3rd, Christopher Robin opened up to the movie, go movie going public. And I also ordered this one today as well <laughs> on Blu-ray. <laughs> That's my waltz up. I ordered two movies today. Uh, Christopher Robin, uh, have you, either of you seen it since it hit the theater? Yes. No. Yeah. No? So, George, re-watching it, what were your thoughts? Um, it honestly took me back of watching it in the theater. I mean, it was just as good. I mean, I definitely like to look more deeper into a movie watching it a second time. And it, it's just a feel-good movie. It's yeah. just, like, it doesn't have, like, the extra you know, special effects and everything, but it, just the, the realism that they brought to those stuffed animals that it... I was going to... You know that those stuffed animals were special effects, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was no special effects in this movie. What? <laughs> Jason didn't know that? <laughs> uh, you know what? I really like this movie. I, I, it's... I enjoyed it so much. Jason, do you, I know you like Mary Poppins over Christopher Robin. For I, sure. I enjoy Christopher Robin, but uh, for me, Winnie the Pooh is always going to be the animated Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Uh, September. Oh, does anybody have anything to add for, for August before we go on to September? It was really hot here. It was hot. That's it what was raining here. Yeah, no, it was, it was a hot summer for sure. Um, okay, let's move on to September. And in September was one of the highlights of my year, bar none, other than the Grand Circle Tour podcast starting, was I got to meet Jason and Nikki in person at Walt Disney World, and we did the Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party and had an absolute blast beyond, beyond words. Jason, what did you think of uh, September's meet up that we had? Dude, I had so much fun hanging out with you and Nikki. Um, Stan, you're such a fun person to hang out with. We Same. met at Trader Sam's Thursday night. We did Magic Kingdom. The next day, we did Mickey's Not So Scary. And we kind of did the studios the next day together. Yeah. Yeah, and I did the Tower of Terror behind-the-scenes tour on, on that trip as well, where I got to go into the lobby of the Hollywood... Hollywood I speak for a living. <laughs> Hollywood Tower of Terror. Wait, you're getting paid to do this? No, no, at my work. They, they make me talk. <laughs> I'm supposed to be nice to the customers and stuff. <laughs> That's why I like my job. I have to be mean to the customers. Oh, man. That would be, the, that'd be the dream job. Uh, Hollywood Tower of Terror. I got to go behind the extensions and take photos to my heart's content and not touch anything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I, I have to cut in... I feel so horrible that it just hit me now and passengers, they're probably not going to let me live this down. I actually had the opportunity of meeting Nikki on my trip down in July. Oh, right. I right. just forgot about Nikki. <laughs> That's right. I, I forgot that you yeah. had that meet up too. Yes. I, I met up with her and her husband at uh, Hollywood studios and we got to uh, ride uh, tower of terror a few times. I think she's just going to remember that you totally forgot about her. Oh, I feel so horrible. She'll forgive you. She'll forgive you. It happens to the best of us. If you're listening, I mean, you not me, you. but it happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else for September? September was a September, okay. August, and October were all very soft months as September, far as. It, wait, I, I gotta, I gotta roll the truck to, to, to jump a boat back. Two big things happened in September. One, Tower of Terror became my new favorite ride. Uh, I was on that thing all day long. Two, Stan. I had never done characters before. Right. But you made me enjoy doing characters. And you did a ton of characters on that trip. 
dude, I cried when I met Chewbacca. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> I turned the corner, there was Chewy, and just like hot, salty tears just ran down my face, and I ran to him like a kid in one of the commercials. Did he pull a, a band, like a tissue out of his out of his purse too? <laughs> no, but he gave me like three really strong Wookiee hugs, and they were great. Oh wow! So, what does wet Wookiee fur smell like? Um, polyester, <laughs> wet polyester. <laughs> Uh, in October, the only thing that really happened that I can recall was that Walt Disney World started their date-specific pricing. And people were confused, and people still are confused, and no one really fully understands it. But it is what it is, and I say just get an annual pass, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> That, do either of you understand or have looked into it? I tried. I, I, I don't really. It's like I understand it, but yet I, I don't know like the full logistics behind it. Yeah. It seems to be, it's just like, here, Disney, take my money and just give me back whatever change I'm supposed to get. <laughs> That's basically what it boils down to now. I checked it out and I understand it, it that they're betting that you won't understand it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it seems. I mean, is that, I, I guess is it's that more for when people just buy hmm? tickets? What's is that? that? Is that just when people just buy tickets, not as a package? Got me. It's the whole thing. <laughs> it's the whole thing is part of your package, too. Okay. When you purchase the tickets. To be honest, I never understood how the packages work either because I would click off on the boxes on the website the different things that I wanted. Like, I want the meal plan or not want the meal plan. I wanted the, the pickup at the... I pretty much board. just went for whatever was cheapest. That's how yeah. I just... <laughs> yeah. Maybe this is why it would be a good idea for us to get a travel agent. <laughs> we have you one. Have get a travel agent. We have a travel agent. Now you're forgetting Carolyn. Yeah, we do have a travel agent. Oh, we're bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I, I don't know. It is what it is. November was a little bit busier. Uh, Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill opened up at Disney Springs. And obviously none of us have tried it. Uh, I've been to the old Wolfgang Puck, both, both locations at uh, the old downtown Disney and in Walt Disney World. Uh, I'm not, this isn't high on my list. Is it high on your guys's? Not a fan of Wolfgang. Uh, yeah. I, like they say now he actually owns it as opposed to the corporation owning it and putting his name on it. I don't know if that makes a difference for me or not, but I'll go to it eventually because I do want to hit every single restaurant, but it's not. There's so many other places I want to go to more. Uh, November 18th, the world celebrated Mickey's 90th birthday. And with much fanfare and special spectaculars on TV and birthday cakes and Oreo cookies and everything you could imagine and special Mickey Mouse's each month coming out at the Disney stores. Mickey Mouse and, uh, yeah, it came and went and people went, hmm. It came hey, and the went. three of us did a great Mickey Mouse episode. Yes, it was, it was. And, it's, and it, it is a, a huge, huge celebration. And that guy's gotta be using, having plastic surgery or something, right? He, there's no way he's 90. Hey, watercolor makes it easy. <laughs> Anything to talk about on Mickey's 90th? Go back and listen to our Mickey's 90th. Mickey's 90th. That's all the Mickey celebration you need. There you go. Then, probably the movie of the year that none of us saw, Nutcracker and the Four Rounds came out November 2nd. Are we ever going to see this movie? Yeah. <laughs> as a group. As a, maybe this is something we got to watch when we get together. Okay. Not only is it a no... But passengers, we have our own little private group on Facebook, and Stan put up a poll. You know, who who wants to do a, a go see Nutcracker and review it? All of us said no. <laughs> it was a hundred percent vote. I think it's the first time we all agreed on something. <laughs> I, 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 I tell you what, I'll watch the movie with all you guys, Jay, if you just supply the alcohol. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Okay, so maybe we'll have a vote. Is it going to be Black Hole movie night or is it going to be Nutcracker in the Four Rounds? Black Hole, Black Hole, Black Hole. <laughs> We're watching the Black Hole. I had a friend who went on a Disney cruise. I think it was a Maritime cruise and it was playing in the theater. They were in there only 10 minutes and they walked out. Wow. They suck. 
it's they said it's not their cup of tea. I'm, I'm still getting the Blu-ray. I don't care what you guys say. I'm Are we talking about Nutcracker or Black Hole? The Nutcracker. Oh, the middle sector, cool. <laughs> <laughs> also coming out the same month. See, maybe this is what hurt the Nutcracker. Ralph breaks the internet came out on November 21st. No, Probably what hurt the Nutcracker the was the Nutcracker. <laughs> What's that? What hurt the Nutcracker was the Nutcracker. Yeah. Uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet came out November 21st, and I believe we all really enjoyed it. Yeah? It, yeah, it was a... Uh, it was a... Uh, sorry. It was a fun film. <laughs> I can was, hardly wait to get this one on Blu-ray and be able to pause and see all the little details in it because you know that that they put tons and tons of stuff in that background that we didn't catch in the theater and Easter eggs and whatnot. And as much as I enjoyed the movie, it should have been called uh, Wreck-It Ralph 2, a vehicle for a future Disney princess movie because they stole the show. Yeah. Yeah. Or they could have called it Wreck-It Ralph, this movie won't hold up. They, <laughs> no, it won't. I, I, I told my wife last night because we were talking about the movie and I said they could have just taken that scene, make a Disney short, and it would have been perfect. Just the princess segments. Yeah. Oh, they could still do that. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm sure they will. If it would be hard to get all the voice actors together again, though. The yeah. big boost for the oh, princess. They, don't have the they could record it separate times. I said it then, I'm saying it now, I'm calling it. There's going to be a Disney princess comedy movie in the future. I don't see that. Hmm. Or at least a TV show. They're going to do something. That was so great. They have to expand on that. I would be shocked if they didn't further develop this little princess relationship between all of them. Because honestly, when that's when those scenes came up, like where they were in the dressing room and at the very end where they were rescuing rescuing Ralph, that that's the most I heard the people interacting in the theater through the whole entire movie. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, it was like dead silent. Yeah. And, you know, every time, and it's the part in the trailer, but every time Snow White does the, <laughs> I bust up laughing. <laughs> I bust up laughing every time you do it. <laughs> that and Cinderella, how, how easy it was for her to, to, break, to break that glass slipper and have a shiv. It wasn't her first time doing it. <laughs> Gettorella's done this before. <laughs> You go through glass slippers like some people go through tequila. Is that what you're saying? He was ready to cut her. <laughs> like, oh, this isn't her first time. Uh, okay. Anything else for November that stood out? I'm getting shaking heads. Okay, let's go on to the final month of the year, December. And again, I think Disney's very, very busy at the holiday season, like everybody, and they don't put too much stuff out in December. But Mary Poppins Returns hit the theater on December 22nd. And we had just did a show about it. So if you want to hear our thoughts, go back and listen to it. <laughs> George, do you have anything to add? Yes, because I uh, unfortunately didn't get to make the movie review. I yeah. absolutely love the movie. It's literally in my top three of the year. It was just a, a feel-good movie made you laugh, made you cry. And my favorite song, I don't care who says it, is uh, Triple Light Fantastic, my favorite song. Nice. And it's too bad you couldn't make the review. I know that you were looking forward to joining us on that one. Yeah, most definitely. The um, uh, character dining at Artist Point with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs opened in uh, December of this year. You may be shocked to hear the stand, but I'm willing to go do that one. That looks like fun. I want to try this one too. I haven't heard too, too much about it. I know Lisa put on an extensive uh, review. I haven't had a chance to read it yet on, on uh, for her Facebook page, The Castle Run. And George hey. joins us in September. We'll go. <laughs> you know what? Let's do that. Let's, let's go to the Snow White at Artist Point meet and greet. Say so now, now you just have now you just made me like have to like rearrange all my finances and everything. And now See, I'm going to hold you to this all year. I'm going to peer pressure you into it. <laughs> you know, George, food really is overrated when you make it yourself. You're better <laughs> off just not eating at all. 
save up for some save up that way <laughs> i'll i'll go back to my my college years with ramen noodles there you go. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's the way you, you know, whatever it takes. That's we'll go to Costco. we we'll get there. We'll get those little, like, peanut butter and jelly crustables. And that storage is free for five days. <laughs> Half waters and crustables. I remember that. Oh, no, no, no. He could spend when he's there. He has to save up by, by not eating before, like, two, three months before the trip. <laughs> oh, he's going quiet. <laughs> okay, let's edit that. I was, I was waiting for Jay to say something. <laughs> So that brings us to the end of 2018. Wait, sorry. 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 George? There was one other thing uh, in uh, December. I don't know if you guys uh, seen it on YouTube, but there was also an incident at Disneyland that uh, Santa Claus fell out of the sleigh during the parade. The sleigh yes, I did forward. see that. <laughs> Yes, I, this, I, and I kind of forgot. Now, Santa had a hard time climbing down that tree. I'm thinking he has way more experience going down fireplaces than he does climbing down Christmas trees. Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> I'm just talking about Santa cookies. Leave him some celery. What's that? It's time to stop leaving Santa cookies, everyone, because he, he broke the parade. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what happened with that was the sleigh itself broke and kind of tipped forward, right? Yeah, yeah. the hydraulics oh, yeah. burst. But what was great about that, if you watch the videos, the audience doesn't know what to do, so they just start applauding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, at first there was gasp, and then they applauded. I think they're applauding. He was okay, kind of like at a hockey game after a fight. They applaud, <laughs> or after somebody gets up after being hurt. Um, yeah, he he. That could have been way more serious than what it was. Which is why you should always wear your safety belt. Right. It's there for a reason. It may seem silly when you're sitting up there going, why am I wearing this thing? But that's why. <laughs> that's why. So that wraps up our 2018 review. Do you guys have time to stick around for a bit? And we'll do a really quick of what's coming up for 2019. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Jay, you're okay. Yeah. I have to get to Lowe's after this. The dog broke a window today. <laughs> so 2019 the Tropicana Hideaway Lounge at Disneyland it's a jungle cruise theme land that's going to be opening up in Disneyland wait now, the Tropicana Jason, Hideaway thinking, has already opened it's already opened? yeah opened this month oh okay there we go okay let's stick in December <laughs> <laughs> the Tropical Hideaway is opening it's open look at that news flash <laughs> <laughs> Our fellow tour guide Mindy was just there. Um, she, I was with her when she live streamed it. I wasn't with her, but she live streamed. I got to watch her go see it live. Um, I'm not going to be at Disneyland for at least a month or two. So if anyone goes, I need a spork. I need that two ninety nine tiki spork. They're selling sporks for two ninety nine. Yes. Is it plastic or is it plastic? But uh, definitely not for use. But uh, they they're selling sporks for two ninety nine. They're tiki's. Do they have and googly eyes and and no, 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 no. Their arms? <laughs> but, <laughs> they want a Toy Story. <laughs> you know where you have to get your three Dole Whips now is Disneyland because for an extra ninety nine cents they're gonna throw bacon on your Dole Whip. Oh man, everything goes good with bacon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bacon flavored and, and Dole. Whip. And there's. They do something else on the menu that if you order it, they, like all the cast members, they start banging drums or something if you order it, I heard. There's something on the menu where after you order it, they shout it. They said another, whatever it's called, and they like bang like a gong or something, like every time someone orders it. So kind of like uh, Trader Sam's, they do stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So are we going to check this one out then when we go? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. The Jungle Skipper Jay has to eat at the Tropical Hideaway and watch the other Jungle Skippers float by. This is going to have to be like a, like a three-month tour, not a, not a weekend trip. <laughs> now, how much can we cram in in a few days? Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Star Wars Celebration will be in Chicago in April of 2019, and that's what I'm looking forward to, and I believe we should probably get more Galaxy's Edge news. When that you know, one Dad, that's only four hours away from me, so who knows? I might just drive up. 
There we go. Yeah, four hours. Why the heck? You might as well come. Uh, D23 Expo in Anaheim. We spoke about that one to death on this show. <laughs> oh, can't wait for D23 this year. The Skyliners coming to Walt Disney World. Now, is that 2019 opening? This year? So. That's so cool. And we actually was talking to one of the artists that uh, drew the designs on the like he didn't draw on the Skyliner itself, but he designed the, the pictures that are going on the Skyliners. And he says there's some really cool ones that are going to be coming out. Then the big news of 2019 in the both parks in summer, 2019 galaxy's edge in Disneyland and in the fall at Disney's Hollywood studios. How excited are we for this one? Wait, yeah, go sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Cause you're probably going to say the same exact thing. I'm excited for it to open at the studios because the studios desperately needs it. Disneyland, I have my reservations because they are expecting 200,000 people to descend upon Anaheim on opening day. I really hope this doesn't break my Disneyland or I'll be really upset. Don't stomp on any flowers, people. No, I, I, just, I have my reservations for this being in Disneyland because this... Disneyland will never be the same, no. and I'm hoping it's a positive and not a negative. Yeah, George. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. I'm with that reservations. I'm looking forward to the one in Florida, Disneyland's. I'm nervous about, and especially when they gave that number that they're expecting two hundred thousand people on the opening. Plus, it may be during the time of the expo, so you already have the number of people at the expo plus just the regular Disney fans, plus the Star Wars fans. And I'm thinking, how bad is that park going to be? Shoulder I don't think they're ready. And will I they, will right they open? Now, do you think they'll open before the expo, after the expo, during the expo? What are you, what are you guys' thoughts on this? Pure I, I originally thought it was going to open for the expo, but after they said that number, I don't. If they are, I, I feel personally nothing against the company, but I think Disney is biting off more than it can chew. Um, in the sense of with having everything, having the expo, and then also having Galaxy's Edge open at the exact same time, I just don't see that happening without something happening, like as far as like, like with crowd control-wise goes. Um, I actually crazy. think it's probably going to be open maybe before the expo, just to kind of get – that first opening out so as the expo people come in including us <laughs> that maybe we could at least have an opportunity to at least get into the land because you know it's going to be almost like a six hour wait just to walk into the land yeah. not only the wait times but i don't know how they're going to advertise that um i think for the first year they said star wars land is going to be an additional cost just to go into so you're going to have families that have gone down for this and then to find out it's a separate admission just to get into this land. So you're not only going to have these huge crowds, you're going to have angry people who weren't expecting this. But I do think that that's a smart way on Disney's part as far as Disneyland goes, because I really think for how small the park is, I can't see them doing the crowd control of 200,000 people just for that land. My fear is that if this causes Disneyland to reach max capacity every day, it could be Disneyland's jump the shark moment. Well, yeah. It's, Disneyland is fun, but I tell you, when it's at max, it, it's it not is, worth it. It is hard. My father and my sister went uh, last month to take my nephew for the first time. And they were all there all day. And they said the all they got to do, the train, the monorail, and Woody the Pooh. It was so dense with people, you couldn't move. See, what, uh, when I, I went one time was Max. And I, we, we couldn't even do the train. The train was ridiculous. There have been times where... Would people wouldn't get off the train. It was just going around. It would stop, and no one would get off. No, so it would do just you take think, off again. Do you think if Disneyland started the, the, the My Magic... The, the Magic Plus and everything as far as like with the attractions go, that it can kind of pull some of the leverage of the lines rather than just go and get the paper fast pass? I think no. the only thing that would, if it gets, 
like we're thinking it could potentially get where it's going to be maxed out every night, every day is if they start bringing back a ticket system where you buy tickets for attractions and you get your A, a attraction B, you know, go back that to the old ticket books. Never fly. I, that would cause such a stir. Yeah. But I, how are the, how else are they going to manage this? I mean, people would still go in and just walk around, or walk around though, right? Like, like a lot of locals, they do that now. They, they, they're not all, all these that locals that are going out riding everything. They're just walking around. Uh, even that is, why do you want to walk in a crowd? You're shoulder to shoulder. But yeah. that's but that's where Disneyland's fault is because it's such a locals park that there are people that just go in there, walk around, do a loop around the park, and then leave. Yeah. When I lived there, you would just go in for dinner and leave. Yeah. Or well, they bring their own dinner and leave. Even worse. Can't bring your own food in. In Disneyland? It's not Disney World. You, there's a picnic area outside, but you can't bring in your own meals. I did not know that. That's the first I've heard of this. You can't bring. I, I mean, I don't bring my own meals in either park, but I didn't know you couldn't. You couldn't bring your own meals into Disneyland. No, they have a uh, picnic area to the left of the main gates, um, where the best restrooms are because no one goes in them. Mm -hmm. By the Indiana Jones show building. I did not know that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I'm predicting it now. I think what's going to happen is the lower level of the Mickey and Friends parking garage. There'll be an additional upcharge for start for Galaxy's Edge, where you'll enter through there, and there'll be an entrance through the back by the um, Rise of the Resistance attraction. See, that's why I thought the Eastern Gateway project was genius on Disney's part, and it's just a shame that the city of Anaheim didn't go through it because that also would have helped at least get people from the parking garage to the, the entrance of Disneyland. Because even when that opens, it's just going to be a cataclysmic of cars and people. Yeah. Uh, the city of Anaheim and Disney need to fix that relationship. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit really briefly about some of the movies coming out in 2019. Uh, we're going to start off the year in March with Captain Marvel on March 8th. Are we excited for this one? Yes. Yes. Jason, really quick. Yes, no. Very excited. And if you know Captain Marvel's history with the X-Men being added to the MCU, I really want to know if uh, that thing is going to happen. I'm going to touch on that a little bit. Uh, Dumbo, March 29th. Tim Burton's Dumbo. I'm excited for this. I'll definitely see it. Yeah. It's I think like, I'm more excited for this than any other of the live action, in quotes, remakes that I have been in the past. I'll see it, but I'm kind of Tim Burton down at this point. Okay. Avengers Endgame, April 26th. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'll be going to that one. Heck yes. Aladdin, May 24th. Yay. I'm so excited for Aladdin, sorry. Are you? I'm more excited for Dumbo. George? Um, I want to definitely see both, but definitely Aladdin. More so than Dumbo? My Disney alter eco is Iago, so I hope they do my bird right. See, I wasn't a huge, huge, huge fan of the animated Aladdin either. So I think that kind of softens my enthusiasm, as it were. Say what? I know, I know. Okay, now this is a Fox movie coming out. Uh, it's supposed to be coming out, but I'm going to put it on the list anyways. The Dark Phoenix on June 7th. Yes. Like an X-Men type thing. And now do you think this will tie in with Captain Marvel at all? No. No? Not yet? Too soon? They're going to make a clean break from the Fox universe, I'm calling it now. Okay. They're yeah, going to start yeah. over. You will not see Hugh Jackman in Endgame. They're going to... This is the end of... Fox is Marvel. Um, Dark Phoenix is one of the most important stories in all of Marvel comics. So please get it right. Yeah, exactly. And then plus, I also think that after they're done with Endgame, that's where they'll kind of reset and then start over with the, you know, the new, not new, but. Yeah. Yeah, give it a reboot, as it were. Uh, Toy Story 4 coming out June 21st. Who's a Sporky fan? <laughs> you must know, be not excited for this movie everyone telling me how hard I'm going to cry at the end 
<laughs> Bring yeah, your sunglasses there. Like both, yeah, both with Tom Hanks and Tim Allen, the way that they said that they had to turn around in the recording booth. I mean, like, how bad is it? So I, is someone, I think at the end, someone's going to break Sporky in half. This is what's going to happen because they're done using him. If it's the end of Toy Story, fine, but I don't need Buddy, Buzz and Woody to punch me in the gut. The, uh, the whole, I just want to touch quickly on Sporky. I know a lot of people are saying that they think that this thing is goofy, that they, it's a homemade toy and it shouldn't be a toy. But I don't think it's so much, I, I think this is kind of a cool concept in that it's a homemade toy and therefore it's a toy. So now it has a personality and comes to life when the humans aren't around. And I think this is an, a great message that Disney's sending out that you don't have to buy a toy for it to be a toy, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I think it, I, I don't know, I, I think it's going to be, I think it's a nice, a nice, uh, nice twist. If that's what they go, Sporky might be just there for, to create internet buzz for all we know. I will say real quick, my beef with Toy Story is I have an upstairs office with a couple hundred Doctor Who figures on the shelves. And every time there's a noise, we go, well, I hope they're not Toy story it up there. <laughs> Another one that's, I don't think this is the Disney one. This is more, I think it's Sony or whatever. But Spider-Man, Far, Far From Home. Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Far From Home. On July yes. 5th. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I think this is kind of, this is like, I guess this is like the sequel to uh, Homecoming, where yes. he goes to Europe. Should be good. Lion King, July 19th. Another live action made it from, in quotes, Live action quotes made from uh, animation remake. Absolutely. The only thing that I just hope that they don't do is literally do the animated movie, but just in CGI. Like I want to see some different. Yeah, I agree completely. It, watching that trailer, it's basically frame for frame. Yeah. It's like they traced the trailer or they traced the original. Looking forward to it, but I'm more excited for Aladdin. Okay, fair enough. I'm more excited for the, the the Avenger movies and the Spider-Man movies and the Star Wars movies and whatnot. But uh, the New Mutants, August second. Now, is this going to have a Captain Marvel hint to it or twist to it? You think? No, this is part of the Fox uh, X Men and um, readers. I mean, listeners. Some of the best Marvel comics were the '80s New Mutant stories. If you just want to jump into the movie without reading it, go find the Demon Bear Saga, which this is based on. This movie all the way. It's yeah, a, are you looking forward to this one? Yes, it's a uh, horror comic movie. I'm not a huge, huge uh, X-Men or X-Men mutants or fan at all. I have never reflected any of the comics. Um, I mean, Wolverine was okay. I got the Wolverine miniseries when I used to collect, but it just never really sparked my interest, and neither did any of the the movies never really did either. None of the X Men movies struck my fancy either. But I think if it gets returned to Marvel, I think if they do it right of how they've been doing with all these other movies, I think it may pique a new interest. I'm a huge X Men fan, and my favorite Marvel characters are all X Men: Emma Frost, Cyclops, Magneto. So please, Disney, do those characters justice. There you have it, uh, Artemis Follow. Fowl, August 9th. Have you heard anything about this? It soon seems to be sliding under the radar for most people. I saw the trailer. Um, looked okay. I mean, it had more of like that wrinkle in time sort of feel. Yeah. It. They're describing it as uh, die hard, but with fairies. <laughs> <laughs> so, could be interesting. I guess time will tell on this one. Well, you lost me on that description. Die hard with fairies? So Tinkerbell's going to, what, save Christmas at Nakatomi Plaza? Well, it's in August, so it's not going to be a Christmassy type thing, but I think it's going to be, I don't know. Well, I, I, I don't know very much about You've this. You've totally lost me with the description there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the one that we, I know that you two are the most excited about that's going to be coming out. and uh, You guys are going to be first in line, pushing little girls out of the way. November 22nd, Frozen 2 hits the theaters. <laughs> I will, I'm looking forward to this one. I didn't think I was going to like Frozen, saw it, bought the Blu-ray, so I'm in. Yeah, I'd probably just go just, just because of the 
what Frozen became. And just Plus, it's part of your contract, so you have to go. I was way more impressed with Frozen than I thought I would be, enough to buy the Blu-ray. Well, I got the Blu-ray too, but I got every Disney Blu-ray, so <laughs> it doesn't stack up to very much. <laughs> Star Wars Episode Nine, the pinnacle that of the the ending of the Skywalker saga, December 20th. Now, this is the one that I'm most dire to see out of any movie in 2019. Um, do I, 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 I want to see it just for the fact of that this, this part of the saga is going to be done and over with. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think that they're, that they're flogging a dead horse at this point? As far as like with with Ray and, and Kylo and everything. I mean, it started off kind of high, but my expectations of what I'm, I have a little more higher expectation because JJ Abrams kind of took it back. And he said that he's going to tie in all the star Wars movies together. And that princess Leia is definitely going to make a cameo in this one way or the other. I don't know how, but yeah, they, they're, they're definitely having her in. So I definitely still want to see it. I'm, I'm, but I guess oh, you just, have to see. How could you not want to see? Yeah, it? <laughs> but it's more so. I'm not going to go in with the expectations that I did with the Last Jedi. Yeah, it's probably a good thing. Yeah, is to, to lower your expectations just a notch or two. Jason, I want to like this movie, so I right now have zero expectations. Um, I'm just hoping I like this movie because Force Awakens. Every time I see it, I like it less because it's a retelling of A New Hope. And we've already talked about Last Jedi. So I'm, I, I just kind of hope I like this one. Yeah. I, I really want this one to do well, because I want more Star Wars movies in my life. I want to like this one, so I'm hoping it's one I like. I want you to like this one, too. And I want everyone else to like this one, too. Because I want, for, for, for greedy reasons, I want more Star Wars movies in my do, life. Do you think that Disney is pushing a little bit too much of Star Wars as far as, like, the films go, where people are just dying out on it of saying, oh, here's another one, here's another one? Like, do you think uh, they still make them, but kind of, like, space them out a bit? I think, I think they learned their lesson with Solo to not have them less than six months apart. Is, Out of the uh, last four they've done, Solo and Rogue One I've loved. So I'm wondering if it's a generational thing where I like them more because they're in the ones I grew up with. Hmm. Yeah. If that appeals to me. But I just, I haven't, like, I love all the new characters. Like, Kylo, love Kylo. Um, love all the new characters, all the new stuff, but the actual movies I haven't liked. So, so let's um, speak in case. So your favorite were Rogue One and, and Solo. And I'm not going to dispute that. I, I really enjoyed those as well. They're the two in my top three. The, um, or four, I guess. If you could make a standalone movie on any character, who would you make it? Which, which Star Wars character would you make a standalone movie on? Obi-Wan Kenobi. And what time period? Anytime Ula McGregor can play him. So would it be like right after episode three, basically? I think somewhere, like, somewhere between three and four. Yeah. Well, yeah, that'd be like right after episode three. <laughs> so he's but on like, Tatooine. But like, uh, like at the halfway point between three and four. Yeah. So, it, it, so you, are you thinking like a story where he's kind of protecting Luke or he goes off world off Tatooine? I don't see why he couldn't go off world for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, George? Maybe he's got some unfinished business. Uh, Boba Fett for me. Yeah? Yeah. I, right, that's... After, right after episode two, to where you see him again as the, the bounty hunter. So basically he's a delivery person bringing Han to, to, to uh, Jabba. He's yeah. like a UPS driver. At... <laughs> Sign here. <laughs> well, hey, George, one of the things I find interesting um, about that idea is if you watch The Clone Wars... Bosk helped raise Boba Fett. Yes. So you'd have some really interesting stories that would tie him to the other bounty hunters of the universe. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be kind of interesting to actually base a Star Wars movie solely on a villain. Like, like follow the villain's point of view. That brings me to yeah. my show that I want to see. I'd like to see a standalone Darth Vader movie where it's right after Rogue One. Or actually, 
even before, well, kind of the Rogue One era where he's in his prime hunting down Jedi. And I know that the comic book came out and they, that's, yeah, that's the exact story in the comic book. But yeah, that's what I want to see. I want to see, see Vader going from planet to planet, basically hunting Jedi. Yeah, have you read the Darth Vader solo series by Marvel? Yeah, yeah, I have read okay. that. Yeah, that's basically the, the, what the story is. Right? Yeah. yeah, no, that's, that's the... Make an that's excellent movie. That movie. Hmm? Make an excellent movie. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. That was an amazing comic book series. Anyways, we're going to wrap this show up. I'm going to pull this ship over. We're going to uh, disembark and say Happy New Year to everybody who's listening. And if you're listening to this in the future, I hope that 2018 was all that you wanted it to be. And 2019 will be everything that you hope it will be. Do we have anything, George, any final words, thoughts? Uh, just Happy New Year, passengers. And we look forward to you joining us for uh, 2019. Jason? Happy New Year, everyone. And like the blue lady said, we have nowhere to go but up. There you are. Take it away, Ken. If you would like to keep the adventure going after the show, be sure to like our Facebook friends page, Grand Circle Tour Magical Ticket Holders. While on Facebook, like our group page, Grand Circle Tour. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Grand Circle Tour Podcast, as well as Instagram, GCT Podcast, and our YouTube channel, Grand Circle Tour. If you would like to send us a message, you can email us at gctpodcast at gmail.com. T-shirts and other fun merchandise can be found at tpublic.com. Simply search Grand Circle Tour Podcast. If you enjoyed your adventure, leave us a review on Apple Podcast. Only one rule, make it good. Thank you for riding with us, and welcome home. <laughs>